They were the four rich teenagers of America. Everyone had finished the party. On the way home, they were drunk, so they kept rioting in the car. The boy even got up with the wine bottle. He drank, threw the bottle away on the driver. The driver distracted, the car immediately crashed into something. The boy's head was beaten bleeding, the front of the car was bashed. They felt like they crashed into something. But the girl saw a boot, they panicked, turned on the flashlight to look around. Finally, they found a corpse on the side of the road. Another girl wanted to call for a police, but the boy pulled her back. He said that, if things were to come out, their careers would collapse. Not only could she not enter the university later, but it also blamed their family. Besides, after all, this corpse didn't look like a rich man. Just found a place and threw it down. No one would know their crimes. The three men were silent. Suddenly a car drove up. The young man quickly called everyone to drag the corpse to the side of the road, and Julie approached the car. She recognized that the driver of the car was Max, who liked her. Julie lied that they drank too much and drove so they broke the car. Seeing her sincere gaze, Max certainly believed. After he left, the rich people put the corpse in the trunk and drove to the sea. They put the body on the edge of the dock, but no one dared to push it down. Reluctantly, her best friend stood out, about to push it into the ocean, but the corpse suddenly burst up, grabbing her crown. Everyone saw that, quickly pushed the body down. The crown and the corpse gradually sank into the sea. Barry quickly jumped into the sea to get the crown back, but as soon as he grabbed the crown, the corpse opened his eyes. Barry was afraid and swam back immediately. Finally, before going home, Barry made everyone swear to never tell this secret. They thought everything was fine, but on next year's summer vacation, mom handed Julie a piece of paper. She opened without hesitation. I know what you did last summer. Julie was scared. She quickly asked her mother who brought the paper, but she said it was completely impossible to investigate. Julie was very scared. Early the next morning, Julie told best friend and Barry, but their reaction was very different. Best friend was also scared, but Barry thought this was an evil joke. But to be sure, they decided to investigate the mastermind. Barry felt that the mailman must have been Max who was in the scene last year. So they looked for Max, forcing him to tell about everything, but Max didn't admit it. They left angrily. They did not know that the plot of revenge was quietly going on. That evening, Max was killed at the factory. And the next target of the culprit was Barry. At night, Barry walked out from the bathroom of the gym. He discovered a photo on the cupboard. Barry looked around the room when he reopened the locker to find that the jacket with the car key had been taken. In a panic moment, Barry went outside to see that his car had been driven away. Barry scolded and chased, but the car turned again, driving towards him. The car crashed into Barry and the wall. Barry struggled, but a mysterious person with an unknown face stepped out of the car. He looked at Barry and took out an iron hook, but Barry was not dead. He was admitted to the hospital, but in order not to affect the family's reputation and the career of his rich father, he did not alert the police, but discussed with Julie to go to the house of the dead. They wanted to investigate who killer was. That house was empty. Julie was about to climb through a window when a girl suddenly appeared. Julie and her best friend lied that they wanted to borrow their phone to make a call. The kind girl brought them inside. Julie asked her best friend to call, she would talk to the girl to find clues. While talking, Julie learned that the girl was the sister of the dead and the dead had a good friend named Billy. Julie and best friend looked at each other, maybe Billy was helping the dead avenge. The two of them got back into the car, and Julie recalled a photo of the dead's house. She felt very regretful. A being was alive, only because of their selfishness made him disappear. But best friends advised her, perhaps this dead man was a bad man, worthy of death. Julie felt that her best friend's thoughts were too selfish, so Julie told her best friend to get out of her car. But Julie did not know that her best friend was in danger. A mysterious person was quietly entering the house of her best friend. The next day, her best friend got up and find that her hair had been cut. Large letters appeared on the mirror, seemingly a warning. The next time it's cut, won't be your hair. After that, Julie immediately drove to her best friend's house, but she felt a bit unusual in the car. The trunk seemed to have a strange sound that scared her. So Julie stopped the car, opened the trunk. There were many crabs and a corpse inside. This corpse was the object they suspected before. This meant that the culprit was another. Julie got scared, closed the trunk, and hurried over to her best friend's house. But when Barry opened it, the trunk was empty again, with no trace of the corpse. Julie was devastated, but responding to her was just silence and strange things coming. After she calmed down, they went to their best friend's house, discussing how to find the culprit. 
Julie remembered that her best friend had to join in a beauty contest today. According to the perpetrator's personality, he would go there. At that time, bury an ambush in the dark could catch him. So best friend and Barry acted according to Julie's plan. At night, the contest took place jubilantly. Best friend was invited on the podium, but she was very distracted. Her eyes did not dare to leave Barry standing on the second floor. Suddenly she saw the mysterious person behind Barry, locking Barry's neck. Best friend wanted to go to the second floor to save Barry, but everyone thought he was crazy and hold her. Finally, a policeman believed her, investigated the second floor with her, but the floor was empty. The police could not find any trace, but in the corner they did not notice, there was a drop of blood dripping silently. Many people were being killed continuously, she thought it had something involved the person they killed. So Julie brought her graduation photo to the house of the dead man's sister, and asked who she was to help the assassin. But her sister came out holding a knife, she looked unfriendly. Julie was kicked out of the house by the dead man's sister. Julie was helpless, found her ex to find a solution. She went to his workplace, was about to tell Ray the truth, when suddenly she found out on the fishing boat two words Billy Blue. Julie was suddenly aware that Ray was the culprit. Julie ran away, Ray chased to explain when a man fight him. This stranger looked very reliable, he told Julie to get on his boat to hide, but he silently removed the ropes of the boat. She felt something strange, and discovered the room was full of secret photos of her and her friends. It turned out that this man was the real culprit, and she had become his prey. The man entered. Julie recognized him. Julie remembered that they stabbed him and dumped his corpse in the ocean. Now he was back for revenge. Julie ran up to the cabin when she found out that the trip had left the dock. She was trapped on the trip. In the phone box she discovered the pistol. She was about to reassemble, but he shook the boat to drop the gun. Julie was extremely scared, so she went down to the basement. Ray drove the lifeboat to save Julie, but was knocked down by the man. Julie found a way out in the basement. She finally found the frozen cellar, took off her shirt, and opened the gate. To block the hatchway, she pushed a lot of ice out, but suddenly she saw a corpse. Next to Julie there was another corpse. This place was a corpse hidden frozen cellar. Julie exclaimed in fear, but the man stepped onto the deck and opened the frozen cellar door. When he smiled wickedly, Ray climbed into the boat and threw a heavy iron at him and saved Julie. But the man regained consciousness, knocked Ray down, used a hook to strangle Julie, and forced her to be charged with a car accident one year ago. Julie shouted desperately, she felt she must be died. But unexpectedly, the man's hand was suddenly wrapped in a rope, pulling him up in midair. Thus, the man's hand was cut off, and he fell into the ocean. Julie was saved by Ray. They felt very scared. After experiencing Samsara, they fell in love again. By the summer of next year, they thought everything was fine, but they discovered a few large words on the bathroom door. The killing was not over yet, the revenge would reincarnate one more time.